in today's lecture we will talk about the antidepressants and in our this lecture we will cover some very important points regarding the pathophysiology and the pharmacology the very first point will be what is depression what is the cause of depression how to counter this cause how to reduce the cause or how to alleviate this cause and the next point will be antidepressants pharmacology and in this pharmacology we will talk about the typical antidepressants and atypical antidepressants so let's start from the name antidepressants anti stands for against depressants is from the term depression so the drugs that you use against the depression are known as antidepressants in short and now let's come to our very first point what is depression depression is actually intense feelings of sadness hopelessness sleep problem suicidal thoughts and etc when you observe all these psychotic conditions that is actually known as depression now let's come to our next point what is the cause a very prominent and important cause that is deficiency of monoamine when the monoamine's concentration decrease that actually give birth to depression now the question again rises is that how to counter this deficiency and the very answer for the question is that we will increase the monoamine's concentration now again question rises how will we increase the monoamine's concentration in order to know this answer we have to understand about the neurons and neurotransmitters neurons of the norepinephrine serotonin dopamine and uh, the very simple rule that is followed by all the three neurotransmitters is that from the neuron the neurotransmitter will be released into the synapses here this is the synapses and here in the synapses the neurotransmitter will bind to the receptor and this will activate the receptor like this the actions will be shown by all the three neurotransmitters so what happens in case of depression these neurotransmitter their concentration is decreased somehow due to which the depression is arising and now what we are supposed to do is that we are supposed to increase the concentration of norepinephrine serotonin dopamine in the synapses so when we increase what will happen then the signaling between the neurons will become okay and a person will become okay again so what happens is that when the norepinephrine is released into the synapses it may be reuptaken by the transporter known as norepinephrine transporter and the same transporter is available for the serotonin for the dopamine so what happens next is that when these neurotransmitters like norepinephrine serotonin dopamine when these neurotransmitters are reuptaken back into the neurons what will happen then then inside the neuron we have enzymes known as monoamine oxidase then what will these monoamine oxidase do as the name indicates monoamine oxidase these are the enzymes which are going to act on monoamine and we know about the monoamines monoamines are norepinephrine serotonin dopamine so these enzymes are actually going to break degrade these monoamines so now if we want to increase these neurotransmitters concentration what are we supposed to do very simple we have to focus some sites the very first site is these transporters and the second site is these monoamine oxidase enzymes so like this we will be able to increase the concentration of the neurotransmitters or these monoamines how like if we block these all transporters what will happen then the neurotransmitter released into the synapses will not be reuptaken like this the monoamines concentration will increase in the synapses and second point if we block or inhibit these monoamine oxidase what will happen then then the stored neurotransmitter or available neurotransmitter will not be broken anymore like this the concentration will increase again so this is how we can increase the monoamines concentration and this is our very important job means we are supposed to increase the concentration of these monoamines in the synapses now let's come towards the pharmacology this pharmacology will help us in, in increasing these monoamines so in the pharmacology we have typical antidepressants and atypical antidepressants first let me clear the terms typical and atypical typical their site of action is quite now and they are working at specific site of actions and atypical antidepressants are the drugs that uh, have side effects profile a little bit change from these typical 
and these uh, atypical antidepressants are actually having mixed site of actions what one thing is that these are having mixed site of actions number two is that their uh, side effect profile is in a change from these typical that's why we have placed these drugs in the atypical antidepressants so now let's start from the typical antidepressants now how these typical antidepressants are working or helping us to increase the monoamines concentration the very first point is that we are using the drugs known as SSRIs selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors the name indicates it is selectively blocking the transporter of serotonin now if we take the drugs of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors these will come and will block this transporter so what will happen next very interesting and very simple now because when this transporter is blocked then the neurotransmitter released in the synapses will not be reuptaken so like this we increased the monoamines concentration of the serotonin and uh, sometimes we need to block both the serotonin and norepinephrine transporters so for that we will take serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors now the drugs in this class they will help in blocking these two transporters and if we block these transporters what will happen then the norepinephrine released serotonin released into the synapses then what will happen then concentration of norepinephrine and serotonin will increase in the synapses like this we increased the monoamines and this is our job to increase the monoamines so if we are increasing the monoamines we are actually countering the depression and the next one is TCAs tricyclic antidepressants these drugs are given the name because of their structure they contain three cyclic ring in their structure now TCAs have also got a very important role in blocking of the norepinephrine and serotonin transporters these drugs will also block these two transporters so like this they are also helping in increasing the monoamines concentration in the synapses and now a question is arising here that if SNRI is also doing the same job then why TCAs are used the very simple answer is that sometimes the patient don't respond to the SNRI. That's why we are going then for TCAs. Very simple. And the next one we have is monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Now monoamine oxidase inhibitors are the drugs which are going to inhibit the monoamine oxidase enzyme. If we inhibit this enzyme, then no more norepinephrine, serotonin, dopamine will be broken. If these monoamines are not broken, then the concentration of these monoamines will increase in the neurons. And like this, enough concentration will become available to come out into the synapses and to do the job. That's it. Very simple. And we have monoamine inhibitors drugs. Uh, which are going to act on type A and type B monoamines because we have these monoamine oxidase of two types type A monoamine oxidase type B monoamine oxidase and type A monoamine oxidase are available in all these nerve endings whether it is norepinephrine serotonin or dopamine but the type B is available in the dopamine and they are present more in the brain and where we're talking about the type A they are available for these nerve endings GIT liver and the same is somehow availability for the B also they are also available in the liver etc and before we move towards the atypical antidepressants I would love to mention this point that these drugs are given according to the patient whatever the patient is responding to which drug then the patient is given the particular drug in order to counter the depression or you can say in order to increase the desired monoamines well now let's come towards our point that is atypical antidepressants atypical antidepressants we have uh, uh, drugs like uh, bupropion metazapine nefazadone and trazodone now i have mentioned the drugs name in the atypical antidepressants but i have not shown here the very reason behind is that then the lecture will become lengthy and somehow boring so that's why i missed the names of these drugs so you are supposed to go and check your books from which you are doing the study you will find the drugs of each class and uh, the very reason behind writing these atypical antidepressants is that because these are a very in a few in number and the very point that you must remember again is that i mentioned it a moment earlier that atypical antidepressants they have uh, side effects profile changed from these typical antidepressants and they are they are having actually mixed site of action due to which we are placing these drugs in the atypical antidepressants bupropion now this drug is having the site of action that is the very first one is on the norepinephrine and uh, the second one is on the dopamine neurotransmitters transporters so now they are working here on these transporters bupropion and the second one we have is metazapine this is going to work on the norepinephrine and serotonin transporters and the next one we have is nefazadone and trazodone these medications are actually going to inhibit the transporter of the serotonin serotonin transporter will be inhibited by nefazadone and trazodone and uh, the mechanism of action is quite obvious when these transporters are blocked 
then the neurotransmitter released into the synapses will not be reuptaken. So like this, the concentration of the neurotransmitter in the synapses will increase and like this, the result will be decrease in the depression. Because in the depression, we have deficiency of these monoamines and if we take these medication, they will actually help us in increasing the monoamines. So when monoamines concentration increase, then the depression will decrease. And this is a little bit from my side regarding the antidepressant. And if still you have any kind of question regarding the topic, you are requested to type your question in the comment box. We'll come for the answers very soon. And thank you for watching. You can have a screenshot.